Folks, today we are talking about IoT, Internet of Things. The most jargon word, the most confusing topic of right now on the internet. Of course, people are developing apps for it or developing models for it. But again, a lot of people are still confused and that's why we have opted this topic. First of all, thanks to these people who have suggested for today's topic. And in case you want to suggest me for today's technical talk, which I all of them read, is a quick way is to just post me on the social media, like you can post on my Facebook page, the links are here. And you can also tweet me via the Twitter handle, hitesh.com, it's D-O-T-C-O-M. Okay, so let's talk about what is Internet of Things. So how we are using internet right now is heavily dependent on how you understand the internet of things. Like for example, the present internet is based on some external devices like I'm the user and these are my things like external things like phones or maybe my tablets or something like that. So in order to use these internet facility, I need to actually access some device and these device I have to carry on and I have ca I have been carrying beams, them so long that I forgot that these are external devices that are not a part of my day-to-day -day life. I made them a part of my day-to-day -day life like mobile phones. So the goal is actually to integrate the technology seamlessly in the new things and that's why the name Internet of Things in the things that I used it in my daily life, like my watch, or my TV, or my pen, or my helmet. And what we like to do is put a, some kind of small sensor into these technological pieces, which I basically call sensors, into some devices, might be my air conditioner or anything like that. And once, I, once these sensors are inside that, they can collect some data and transmit that data to another gateway or maybe directly onto the internet. And then we can actually do tons of things with that. So with this, a lot of people are trying to contribute into the IoT and with that, the latest what's happening in the technology world in the IoT is one of the company known as ARM has released a dedicated operating system known as Embed OS which is specifically designed for IoTs because IoTs are not that massive things, it's a very small thing that you need to integrate out there seamlessly. and. The embedded OS is actually dedicated for that. It follows all the protocols of IoT and goes with that, with like that. Okay, so why we need an operating system? Since I'm talking about that, I need to explain a little bit of technical stuff of the operating systems. So the operating system which we are quite familiar with is multitasking. It's like your Android, your iOS, Windows. Yes, I'm gonna put Windows in that category for right now. Just bear with me. So this is the one category which we are quite familiar. The another category is the RTOS or the real-time operating system which is generally in the aeroplanes or these sophisticated devices which works on the real-time analysis and things to be done in the real time. So that's the different category. But these operating systems are power hungry. So we cannot use them with the IoTs. Imagine my helmet is uh, IoT and I'm just plugging it again and again to just get some power. So that's not possible with the IoTs. Another is, you can call them as a bare metal, but they are constant, uh, somewhat like the RTOS because they keep on looping and looping and trying to find out that particular one event which is responsible for triggering another event or maybe some files or something like that. So again, that's not possible because with so much of the code which is going to process a lot of things, it's not even possible to integrate it IoT. That's why we needed a dedicated operating system for that and that's what they are doing with the embedded OS which is are currently an open source project. So that's why we needed that. Now, when we integrate this technology with IoT devices, it definitely needs a gateway to pass on the information onto the server or internet or somewhat like that. So definitely gateways are a great way to have that. Now that gateway might be a separate device, might, might be your mobile phones or maybe your tablets or anything like that. Okay, but in order to transfer that information from IoT to the gateway, we need a very reliable communication source which is also not power hungry or you can call them as a low power source. So they usually transmit via the technology or the transmission channel known as Zigbee or maybe Bluetooth or like that. So that's the whole idea. What can be the future implementation of that? That is a tricky question. Let's uh, get some questions or some suggestions on that. Let's just create a hypothetical situation. Let's say I'm coming to my home. It's very hot here. I want to turn on the AC before I enter the room. Maybe just 15 minutes from my app of mobile phone. 
that might be a great integration of IoT in the air condition with my phone. That's really awesome. But again, my AC needs to be connected to internet, internet should be on and my app should be connected to the internet as well. Now some of you might be saying, we are not that, not that lazy. We can turn on the air condition by going inside the home. Again, folks, we have already become quite a lazy and we will become more lazy with the technology. No hard guesses in that. Of course, we will become and we will, we will like to do that. Uh, there can be tons of examples of that. Let's take one more. Let's say I want to drive in the car and let's say my car engine light has turned on. So what right now I assume is that I need to see a mechanic or take appointment from the workshop as quick as possible. Otherwise, I don't even know that. But imagine the IoT integration with my bike or my car. Then when the light turns on, it automatically sends some data, of course with my permission, sends some data to the dealer and dealer finds out what's the problem, calls me that your problem is crucial, you need to come as quickly as possible, you need to order new uh, gadgets or new uh, engine parts or something like that. So that can make my life much more easier. I can understand what the problem is. It's really going to, going to be very, very uh, crucial. It can save tons of lives, but let's say you integrate that with a helmet IoT being integrated with the helmet, when the helmet gets an impact, it automatically sends the data to the nearest hospitals and hospital calls you back and really if you don't pick up with two or three calls, it just sends it to onto your location, it can save tons of lives. So with that, this is just a real life example that are on to a very small scale and of course you can, uh, you can escalate it to a high level like for example you can make an entire home which is smart out there but of course with that, security is a big issue because nobody likes to live in a home which is constantly being monitored by some hacker or hacker can turn on the lights, turn off the lights, uh, make it freezing cold or can stare you via your webcam. That's scary and creepy as well. But again, security is an integral part of the new technology. So we have to handle that. A lot of companies are working on the IoT securities. A lot of conferences are happening and they are trying to pen test these smart TVs, smart pens, smart helmets. I don't know whether the helmet is out there or not, but again, uh, being a fan of biking, I like to think like that. Okay, so I think this movie helped you quite a lot to learn about Internet of Things. My small request would be to subscribe to my channel, like the videos, and of course, don't forget to follow me on the Twitter and just send out the topic for Internet of Things. You can send it to me anytime, post it on my wall or just tweet me, I read all of them and whatever the topic, I like that I need to do this today, I'll be doing that. But again, I'll be taking all of the topics. We have a lot of going on in the technology and we can just work on with that. Again, subscribe to the channel and see you there.